Music library epidemic sound have had a huge amount of composers up in arms about its business model, saying how writing for them could seriously destroy an up and coming composer's career. Epidemic's co-founder and CEO Oscar Hodland says Epidemic's biggest creators make tens of thousands of dollars per month with them. In this video, we'll uncover what both sides are saying and whether as a composer or music producer yourself, you should be considering writing for or running from Epidemic Sound. I'll also show you how established composers responded when Epidemic Sound hit back. So stay tuned for that. For great insider tips on writing production music for music libraries, TV, film and games, subscribe to the Music for Income channel and hit that bell to be notified when we post a new video each week. Hey, I'm Michael from Music for Income. I'm a professional TV composer and I also run a production music library. So, should you consider creating music for epidemic sound and what's the big controversy that's going on around them? Let me bring you up to speed on what's going on and first just cover a couple of basics around the situation. Epidemic Sound are a royalty-free music library that have been advertising heavily over the past year or so and aggressively building their business. They are in a growing marketplace with people producing more video content than ever Video creators are looking for soundtracks for their work, but there's a lot of confusion over what music you can and can't use on places such as YouTube in terms of copyright, and you risk having your video removed or possibly even a lawsuit if you get this wrong and violate music copyrights. Royalty-free libraries seek to make this easier for content creators. Now, Royalty-free libraries aren't new. In fact, they've been around for quite some time. For a consumer, purchasing royalty-free music simply means that once you have paid the one-time fee, you can use that music as many times as you want for as long as you want without ever having to pay additional money to the licensor. If you are someone who produces music for these libraries, you usually get a share of the sale each time your track is purchased. But Epidemic Sound has got a rather big skeleton lurking around in its closet compared to all the other royalty-free libraries, and it concerns something called performing royalties. Now, don't let this term confuse you. Royalty-free music is free from the customer having to pay royalties. But interestingly, the, for composers, you can still receive a royalty from other places. Performing royalties are a lifeline for most composers. Composers join a performing rights organization, or PRO, and these companies, such as BMI and ASCAP in the States, or PRS for Music in the UK, are simply collection societies. They collect this stream of money from around the world whenever your music is broadcast on TV, radio, the internet, a whole load of places. This is nearly always then split between the music library and the composer equally. It's been one of the pillars of music copyright for years and financially supports hundreds of thousands of composers and producers all around the world. Epidemic Sound, however, don't allow its composers to even be members of a performing rights organization. This is huge and unprecedented. So why is it so important to factor in as a potential epidemic sound contributor? Well, the reason is that as a composer or a producer, you can't have your PRO collect on some tracks, but not others. It's you that is either a member or not. And therefore, everything that you create, the PRO either try to collect royalties for, or they don't. Other royalty-free libraries allow you to be a member of a PRO, even if their music is usually purchased by clients for small projects that might not see any or much in performing royalties at all. So here are the two main issues for working for Epidemic Sound and therefore not being a PRO member. One, if your music does get on TV, 
let's say BMW choose your music for their new car ad, which is a track you wrote for Epidemic Sound. What would normally have generated you and the publisher thousands of dollars in performing royalties will now get you nothing. Many composers can make a career out of writing music only because performing royalties can be really, really good and support you in those times when you're looking for your next piece of work or when your tracks go through a patch of not getting licensed at all and that happens to the best of us. So reason two, and this is the biggie that the established composers are warning the new composers about. There are many pieces of other work that you probably aspire to as a composer, such as scoring movies, TV shows, and a whole load of stuff in between, where you need to be affiliated to a PRO to do that. I've personally written music for loads of primetime network TV documentaries, for example, and whenever I get a contract through for them, I have to put down my PRO details on the contract. This way, the production company get 50% of performing royalties and I get the other 50%. And that can often be even more than the fee for writing the music for the show. Equally, say you make a contact at a different but really good music library who want you to write some tracks for them to pitch to Hollywood trailers or big TV ad campaigns. Well, you won't be able to do that now because you're not a member of a PRO. So writing music for Epidemic Sound might have some advantages and we will go into those in a second, but it's effectively shutting multiple doors to your career as a composer developing in any meaningful way, leaving you with the question, do I want to just be an epidemic sound composer for the rest of my life? So what's the upside for writing for epidemic sound? Well, I have heard rumor that for more established composers, they're paying fees of up to $500 per track. And in a 2019 TechCrunch.com article, Oscar Hogland, their co-founder and CEO, stated that Epidemic's biggest creators make tens of thousands of dollars per month. Now that is pretty considerable. One might well get the best of us thinking, well, I'm fine, I'll just compose for them then. The only thing is, when I asked around the people I know, and those people asked the people they know, we can't seem to find anyone who's actually on that money with Epidemic Sound. I'm not saying it's a lie, we just can't find them. Epidemic also say that they give 50% of streaming revenue to the composer. And the thing is though, whilst that's something that they should be doing anyway, I don't think there's a human left on this planet that doesn't have an idea how poor streaming royalties are these days. Now, performing royalties, on primetime network TV can be in the ballpark of around $70 per minute each time your music is aired on a program. Counter that with streaming rates and this quote from Peter Frampton where he got $1,700 for 55 million streams of his giant global hit. Streaming royalties just aren't going to support you. And by the way, just for fun, if that track was three minutes long and on primetime TV 55 million times, in performing royalties, it would have generated this. That's $11.5 billion. Now look, of course, that's silly because nothing's ever been on TV 55 million times, but it does give you a point of comparison. So, want to take ringside seats to hear what composers and epidemic sound recently wrote to each other in the comments of a Facebook thread under an epidemic sound ad? The thread was full of composers writing comments like this. Epidemic Sound have a pretty unethical foundation of giving new composers upfront money never to receive royalties again, compared to the wider norm of composers earning a very long-term pension of royalties from broadcast. They are building up their company value by using investments to buy copyright ownership on the cheap. Of course, new composers don't care too much if they're getting cash in the bank, and I hear they're even offering decent buyouts to more established composers. 
but in the end, they are at best a deal with the devil for composers and at worst distorting the market by taking away long-term royalties funded by massive investment debt that they'll probably never pay back. Most publishers and professional composers who know about Epidemic are hoping that they'll be found out, ostracized by TV networks who don't want to look bad and go bust sooner rather than later. To which Epidemic actually replied, Hi there! While we appreciate you taking the time to comment, this is simply not true. We partner with music creators who value distribution over ownership so that they can benefit from their music flowing freely via our powerful distribution network, along with the upfront payments and 50-50 split on received streaming revenue royalties. We also offer a quarterly soundtrack bonus based on the performance of their tracks in our player. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out here or DM by emailing us at hello at epidemicsound.com. Have a great day. And here's another response by a different composer. Epidemic Sound. Distribution over ownership is a very odd turn of phrase. I am all for distribution, but I am also for writers sharing in the income of their, that their work generates. This is the basis of copyright and copyright law. It's why we have publishers and PROs. If this continues, what price copyright? Why have it? Surely not to pull all rights into one megalithic organization. That, after all, is precisely what copyright was intended to prevent. In the UK and most of Europe, for a start, copyright is not something you have to assert. It's yours, legally yours, a point of creation. Signing away such hard-won legal rights lock, stock and barrel is absurd, not least when it allows the distributor, whom you value more than your ownership apparently, to attempt to float for 1.2 billion euros, money that morally, in my humble opinion, should be flowing to creators after a mere 11 years in business. Creators, if you have signed your work to Epidemic, this is what you have enabled. Say no to such buyouts. Believe in the value of your work because this is the value of your work, apparently. YouTube creators, presumably you want to monetize your work. Why enable this culture vandalizing process that prevents music creators monetizing theirs? As you can see, it all got quite heated. So I'll leave it to you to decide whether you think writing music for Epidemic Sound is a good idea or not. And please feel free to leave your thoughts either way in the comments below. Lastly, if you wanna get into writing music for music libraries and generating an income from that, as well as hearing your music on TV, which is an amazing feeling, check out the link in the description below where I've put together three free lessons on how to write library music that sells. You'll hear from award-winning TV editors telling you just what kind of tracks they pick to put onto TV shows, as well as a load of other tricks, tips, and secrets on turning your tracks into income generating music for film and television. And it's free! So just click on the link in the description below. Also, check out the other videos on the Music for Income channel. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and hit the bell to get notified of further videos. Catch you next time.